For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? I'm telling you, that is, that's Christmas, that's grace, that's the message, that's exactly what you and I need to hear, that's the word, that's what God is saying, open up your ears and listen, amen? The, the, the greatest love, which is God's love, which there really is no other love, which, which we think we understand love, but we really don't understand love, no, because God is love, and trying to understand Him is like impossible. God says His greatest love, this greatest love, decided to give us a gift it was the greatest gift not just any gift but the greatest gift it was his son his one and only son jesus christ he gave the greatest gift the greatest love gave the greatest gift the greatest love to whoever to anyone to everyone it says whoever that whoever believes in him this greatest love gave the greatest gift to anyone and to everyone this gift is for whomsoever would believe in his son, Jesus Christ. The greatest love has given to everyone. The greatest love has given the greatest gift for the greatest cause. You know what the greatest cause is? We are. Humanity. We are, me and you. You and I. All around this world, people before us right now and those who are still on their way. That is the greatest cause. The greatest love has given the greatest gift for the greatest cause. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what your last name is, no matter, no matter what kind of past you have, no matter how many mountains of mistakes that you have made, despite anything, the greatest love has given the greatest gift, and it's available to every single one of us. And it's not just any kind of gift, is it? It's life. It's life. You say, well, I'm alive, aren't I? I don't know. We talk about being alive. I don't want to just be alive, man. I want to live. You know what I'm saying? I want to have life, abundant life. God offers life, not just any life, abundant life, eternal life, everlasting life. He offers something that is permanent, right? How many people give you things that's permanent? No, we live in an ever-changing world, don't we? Everything's changing. Everything, everything changes. You're always having to update. You're always having to upgrade. You always got to keep putting gas in the car, right? You always got to keep cutting your hair. Well, at least most of you. It's always changing. But God offers something that's absolutely permanent. He offers something that is lasting. There is no expiration date. There is no strings. And this is no lie. The greatest love is giving the greatest gift for the greatest cause. And it is and always will be the greatest life. That's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the greatest gift. So pray with me one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, as, we, as we're coming to a close this morning, I just pray, God, that you would help us to, to, to rest easy where we're sitting, to open our ears and not be distracted uh, by things going on in here, by things going on on the outside of here. I pray that you would uh, clear every mind. Uh, we just want to see clearly. We want to see you this morning, Jesus. We know that you're here. We've seen you break chains. We've, we've heard you speak. We, 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 we've seen you and sensed you moving in this place. Now we're asking you to speak. Show us what you want to say. That's why we're here today. I pray that your will would be done, that we would recognize this incredible gift that you've given us. Lord Jesus, you, you, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way. Speak. Use me. Speak through me. And we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the honor and the praise, and we'll ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. So this is the greatest gift, right? John 3, 16. I'm, honestly, you know, there's a lot of verses out there about Christmas, right? You know, you've got, you've got Matthew, and you've got the Christmas story, and, and you've got passages in Isaiah. Boy, there's all kinds of, all kinds of prophetic stuff, man, all kinds, of, all kinds of wonderful passages in the Bible. But I'm telling you, John 3, 16 captures Christmas better than anything. And I just, I really believe like God is, is wanting us to review this. I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already know this morning, okay? I'm not going to going to surprise you with something that you have never thought about before but God's trying to remind you God's trying to refresh you I mean God's trying to I don't know he's trying to get us in a frame of mind to get ready for what this month and what December the 25th is all about this greatest gift if you can understand it this morning and begin to wrap your mind around it has a message for you 
This greatest gift is trying to say something to you and to me. Christ is speaking this morning, and he's looking for a church. He's looking for someone like you and me to be listening. And I think the first thing, I believe the first thing, at least that he's been telling me all week long is this, is that we need to do for him what he has already done for us. Amen? You say, what's that? Well, it's real simple. The greatest love decided to give. And so what I want you to think about today and this week and this month, and really just as, as, as far as I'm concerned for the rest of your life, is giving. God wants to bring you to a place of giving. And you say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? Giving what? I'm just talking about giving in general. We need to be a giving people. What did, what did Tracy say just a moment ago? I always say it. This stuff is temporary. You feel like you've got all this stuff here, and you're trying to hold on to this stuff here. Let me tell you something. This stuff is going to be gone one day. This stuff really is, is, is so meaningless. We put so much importance on something that is so temporary. What in the world is wrong with us? We need to be givers. What this world needs to see in people who follow Christ is this idea of giving. We need to learn how to give. And it's not just money, but it's time. It's love. It's patience, man. It's, 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 it's the whole gamut. It's, it's everything about you and everything that you got. Why can't we be, what in the world are you holding on to? And why? We need to be givers. What does the Bible say about giving? This is good. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 8. Man, you guys, Billy could quote this. As I'm speaking, Billy's, he's just mouthing the words because he already knows them. Remember this, whosoever so sparingly will also reap sparingly. So if you say you don't have enough, if you've been complaining to the God that you don't have enough and he's not been providing enough, then according to his word, it's because you're sowing sparingly. So you're blaming God for not providing for you, and God's saying, well, if you would give more, I would give you more. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. If you need God to do something more in your life, then you need to give. That is, I mean, that is the principle that is at the core of who God is. He gave his son, Jesus Christ. Man, that's the answer, the way, the truth, and the life. Without him, we wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be Christianity. We wouldn't have a promise. We would be stuck, like Alberta was saying in the Old Testament. By the way, he was talking about tithe, and people want to argue about tithe. And, you know, well, that's an Old Testament principle. When did Jesus ever say not to tithe? Come on. People argue. I just thought of that. That was just a, I'm sorry. I, I just, um. But Jesus is here. I don't know. He's here. Amen? And he's the example of, of giving. Man, God says give. Give. If you want more, then give more. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly, not under compulsion. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Did you smile when you, when you came and gave this morning? Did you? Do you? Are you happy when you give people things? Do you get excited? H Heather loves Christmas. She is so, she's, she's so crazy. The girl's birthday. So we, um, we, we, we took him to Build-A-Bear, right? And um, I said, don't, go to, don't ever take your kids to Build-A-Bear. They sell you on a really cheap little animal that's like 20 bucks, but then they make you stand there for like an hour and let your kids look at all these super expensive accessories. Yeah. Talk about the bait and switch, man. I'll tell you what. Break every chain. I was, I was. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, no, no. You have to wash the bear. Oh, no, no, no. You've got to stuff the bear. Oh, no, no. you got to. And all the while, Claire is just seeing everything that she wants, every little accessory. It's like I saw a little miniature Kim. Just, I need these shoes. I need these shoes to go on this bear. And Kim's a shopper. She's just, you know, she, she would not deny it. I know some other shoe people, too, but I won't mention their names. I won't mention their names. Yeah, they like shoes. I'm, I'm not, I'm just. But see, Heather was like, but, but we've got to have something for the girls to open, right? Because you know why? Because Heather loves watching people open gifts. That's a cheerful giver. She said, we've got to get something for them to open. We can't just take them to build a bear and let them build a bear. They've got to have a gift bag or something to unwrap. What? And, and I think that a large part of that is that because she loves to see people open the gift. She loves to see our kids open the gift. That's a cheerful giver. We need to be happy when we give people things, man. Not reluctantly, not under compulsion, not because we feel all guilty and, and not because we, I'll do it and, oh, whatever, just take it and get out of here. Boy, what kind of giver is that? It's not. That's not even a giver, man. Just as far as I'm concerned, keep it. Yeah, man. 
as far as I'm concerned, if you don't want to give to God, if you don't want to give your tithe and your offering and you're all upset and mad about it, then it's better off in your pocket than it is in his basket. Amen? You're not doing God any favors. Man, God is able to bless you abundantly. That's what it says. So that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I'm telling you, giving is rock solid. You can't get around it. I've been talking an awful lot about giving here lately. Bishop Young and John testifying and, and Hank threw out some, some giving teaching in Alberta. Well, I tell you what, man, it's, this giving thing is for real. What did Jesus say? Luke 6.38, given it will be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Boy, if God's going to give me something, I just, I'd like to see it running over. Amen? Isn't that horrible when you go to McDonald's and you go to the drive-thru and they give you your drink and, 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 and it's like this far from the top? Have that ever happened to you? And you're thinking, how couldn't they, couldn't they have just filled the cup up? You know, could they have given me less ice? We get so frustrated with McDonald's. Well, I want my cup to overflow, amen? I want it to be spilling out the seams. I want as much as I can get. That's what God wants to do for us. That's the idea. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. I tell you, a lot of giving and a lot of what you need and a lot of what you want and what you're asking for, for, for God in your life, it depends on the way that you give. These are principles in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 8 and 7, and then, and then I want to show you something, because, because here's where God's trying to show us something. He was a great, he was the, the master giver, and now what does he say to us? Since you excel in everything, you excel in faith, you excel in speech, you excel in knowledge, you, you excel in, in complete earn, earnestness and, and love. Uh, and man, you, you guys, you excel, some of you excel in so many different things. See that you also excel in the grace of God. Why would God say that? He would say it because we need to, we need to learn how to be better givers. So I want to show you something. I, you, you may have seen this. This is very recent, just a couple months ago. This happened right in our backyard, New York City. And, and this is a picture of giving. So I want you to watch this because God's trying to tell us something. Amen. We'll get the... Uh How you doing, man? Is it okay if you could spare that slice for me, please? Nah, man, I work for the club. White guys can talk more than me, man. Really? Hi, how you doing, man? What's up? Can I please have a slice? I'm very hungry. I'm sorry about that, Ken. Not today. All right, sorry for asking. Enjoy your slice, man. No, excuse me. Can I have an extra slice? I'm hungry. No, no, no. Sorry for asking. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? We ate a lot of, you know, slices. You want the rest? Alright, here you go, man. Alright, take care, buddy. Hello, how you doing? I'm really hungry and it's, hot. it's hard out there, man. You have an extra slice in there? Yeah, you sure? You wouldn't mind? Appreciate it, man. It's so hard out there. Yeah. yeah. I know how you feel, man. What's sucks. I really thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'm gonna get going. Thank you once again. I appreciate it so much. And I want to being so generous to me. I want to give you a nice little tip, man. Thank you. God bless you, all right?
That happened uh, just a few months ago, in New York City, October 22nd. A couple, couple guys, they got a little YouTube channel, and uh, they thought they would do a social experiment, I think is what they said. But I, I saw that video, it's been a couple weeks ago, and it's just been kind of working on me. And uh, I mean, what kind of giver are we? I mean, look what the world's, <laughs> I know that third guy, I had to beep it all out, right? It was that, I, I debated on whether to even use the video, but I thought, you know, we need to see that. That's, that's, that, that's what goes on in the world. And, I, and I'm not saying that you do that. But what God is asking is, what are you doing? What kind of giver are you? We excel in so many different things. We do, man. Some of you are incredibly good. I can look at you. I go with Alberto and put in water systems, and he's like just crazy good. He knows everything about everything. I couldn't even begin to do like a fraction of what he does. He just knows everything about water and, and purification. I mean, geez, just Tracy. Where's Tracy? Painting. He could paint anything. I mean, he knows everything. He knows what to use. See, we excel. Jimmy with carpet. No, it's people who own their own business. You guys, you're so specialized, you know. You, you excel in so many things. We know how to be really good at stuff. We do. Every one of you. Kim with accounting and, and, and just all the, man, she just, all these things that she could do. We know how to be really good at stuff because we are really good at stuff. And God says, since you excel in all these other things, I need you to excel in this grace of giving. It's not just a Christmas thing, but God certainly had this on his mind for today. God has loved you, still loves you, so much that he gave. And what is he asking us to do? He's asking us to do the same thing, to give. We need to be better givers. We do. We can improve. Amen? We've got to start giving, giving. To who? So who well, that's, that's the natural question, right? So who do I give to? I need some direction here. Anyone. How's that? Anyone. What kind of direction is that, Pastor? It's wonderful direction. Because, because giving is really more of a mindset. It's an attitude, right? Start thinking about giving to everybody. How's that? In the Army, we would say, Lottie, dotty, dotty, everybody, right? When we got ready to move as, as a platoon, everybody did it, right? I tell you, we need to get a mentality this Christmas season, and like I said, for the rest of our lives, listen to what God is saying this morning. We need to be givers, and what we need to do is we need to give to anyone. We need to give to everyone. There should not be any limit. There should be no reservation. There should be absolutely no restriction. I don't care what people look like. Like that guy in the video, man, he didn't have shoes. Unbelievable, the people that would not give those guys a slice of pizza. But this guy who had nothing was so willing to give. Man, where is the church? We need to be giving. To who? To anyone. It said, so, whosoever would believe in him. Anybody that would believe in, in Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Anyone. That's everyone. All people. The ones under your roof. The ones who are close to your heart. The ones who live next door and down the street and across the tracks and through the woods and over the mountain and all around the world. Man, we need to be givers and we need to be giving to anyone. Jesus saying in Matthew 28, 18 and 20, he said, the great commission, man. You know this verse. He said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of who? All nations. This message of Christ, this attitude and mentality of giving has got to be something that we're looking worldwide. There should, there's no reason why you can't give to everyone. There is no reason that you can't give to anyone. You don't have a good one anyways. God's not buying it. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Anyone and everyone. What did, what did Jesus say in Acts 1 and 8? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes in you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the utter ends of the earth. I'll tell you, everywhere, anywhere. Why aren't we giving? Why are we so inhibited in our giving? What is in your way? I thought of Acts chapter 10 when Peter went to Cornelius' house. Remember, Cornelius was a Gentile. 
And, and, and you know what? On the way there, I, I would like to think that he was considering Christ talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Because he, in, 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 his, in his natural mind and in his natural thinking, he was thinking that, that Jewish people had nothing to do with the Gentile. And this promise was for the Jews. But at the same time, he's realizing that Christ was always reaching out to anyone and to everyone. He said things like he said in Matthew 28 and Acts chapter 1, like, man, you need to go everywhere and you need to give this to everyone. And he got there and he began to realize something about Cornelius and Cornelius' household. And this is what he said. He said in Acts uh, 10, 34 and 35, he began to speak and he says, Now I realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. That God is no respecter of person, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Man, God. God is not drawing any lines. God is not limiting you. God is not restricting you. We need to be givers and we need to give to everyone. Anyone. What in the world is in your way? If God is no respecter of person, then neither should we. Amen? So now I want to give some stuff away. Is that all right? I have things hidden over here. Hidden things. Hidden things. I got good stuff over here, man. You guys have no idea. I took a large part of my evening last night, and I, I, I did this on my own. I made these wine cakes. I know. Now, I know some of you are, like, brand new, and you're thinking, okay, a wine cake? All right, there's not really any wine in it. The only whining is from the person who's making them that takes all the hours it takes to make wine. You say, I, I don't just have two. I, got, I've made, I made four. See, the wine cake in my family is my mom's secret family recipe. Some of you know what the wine cake is, right? I know. It looks like just some plain old bunt cake looking. I'll tell you, this is the best cake on the planet. And my mom, my mom swore us to secrecy. She got a little upset when I told Heather how to make it. But I tell you, after making it for so many years, I just I couldn't do it. I just, it takes a lot of time to make these. But I did. I, 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 really, I told her I was going to make some wine cakes. She said, you're going to make them? I said, yeah. I said, because, you know, sometimes we need to do stuff, you know. I just sometimes I feel like I need to do it. So I made these. And so I felt like I was going to give, I, just, I had no, you know, God said you give to anyone. So I, I was trying not to think about anything, but then I thought that Danielle brought her dad today. You get a wine cake, man. So I don't even know him, but I, you get, you're welcome. You can share with Danielle. And Sarah, I suppose. I and I, I thought, Sandy, I don't even know Sandy. I just, we just met, Sandy and I just met. Sandy, I want to give you a wine cake. You have no idea what you're getting into. It's good stuff. I got two more. Now you're thinking. I t look, I tried to not think about this at all because we, sh we overthink things, right? If I planned this out, who was going to give them to, this would never have worked. But God said just anyone, just everyone. So I thought, man, there's got to be some visitors here today. And, and here's Buddha, Alberto's friend. Here's Buddha. I got one for you too. Amen. <laughs> Best cake in the world. Don't ask me for the rest. I can't give it to you. And now... And now uh, the last one, what in the world? I thought about Tracy, but he can't eat all the sugar. No. I thought about, I thought about George, but George is on a diet. And, and Hank is, is on this doTERRA thing. And I can't tempt your dad like that, Austin. I can't, I can't give it to the White family. It would be too tempting for Hank. And then obviously, we can't eat it. And, and Alberto talks about the diet that he needs to be on. I can't give it to him. Um, sorry, Bianca, I can't do that. You're there. It's a temptation. And Kim's training for, like, the fitness. She's going to, yeah. And I, so I, just, I was like, what in the world? And so then I thought, you know, that the, the, uh, the Oswald family, had, they've never had, you've never had the wine cake, have you? Never had, and I, I saw the way that Oswald ate those uh, cider donuts, like the whole box. I know he's got a sweet tooth, so Oswald for the short, or is it shorté? Somebody told me short day. Just short. Okay. All right. So that's for, that's for them. You guys be blessed. Amen? Sometimes we just, Tracy talked about preconceived notions uh, a couple weeks ago on a Wednesday night. Sometimes we just need to, 
to put all that stuff out of our head and quit overthinking things and just be a giver to anyone, to everyone, no matter who they are, just randomly. It, it, but not just people randomly, but, but people that you know and people that you care for. We I don't know what in the world. Why aren't we as a good a giver as God is to us? Why aren't we reflecting that? I'm telling you, as Christmas is approaching, we need to be givers. We need to learn how to give, and we need to, to give to anyone and to everyone. Amen? You guys with me? Still? Okay. All right. Here's the last one. This is the last one, and then we're going to close. Amen? I don't know if it's getting close. All right. 12 o'clock. Austin said I had to be done by 12. Yeah. So what, what is it about this giving that we need to, that we need to think about? It was, it was the everlasting life. That's what caught my attention. But we always focus on life, don't we? You know. But then I thought about the everlasting. Lasting. We need to give people things. We need to give anyone, everyone things. It's lasting. When's the last time that you gave someone that it just left a mark on them? That it just, it just stayed with them? You know, I mean, you know the difference, right? Sometimes we give people something and it, it's just, it, it fades. It's gone. It's, it's temporary. You buy them a meal. The meal's over, right? You know, but when's the last time you gave someone something that just, it just lasted? Because that's what, that's what God has done for you. For God so loved the world that he gave. He wants us to be givers. That whosoever, anyone that would believe in him. We just, we just need to be, just to be wide open to give to anyone, to everyone. And what did he give? What does he offer? It's everlasting life. So he's given us something that lasts. He's given us something that's not temporary, but he's giving us something that's eternal. And I'm not saying you can give someone something that's eternal. I'm not trying to necessarily say that. I'm just saying we need to think about giving people things that's lasting. I mean, sometimes we just want to come in and just try to give someone just what they need at that moment. And we want to get in and we want to get out with our giving. You ever notice that? I mean, church is the best example. People like just to get in and do the church thing and then to get out as quick as they can. And then they wait till next week to do it. And, and when it comes to giving, in a lot of ways, we just want to get in and get out because we've got our own life. We're doing our own thing over here. So when we give, we just want to give real quick and then get out. We want to drop some money in the salvation, you know, the red kettle. And then, and then you know, but when's the last time we've committed ourselves to something? And, and we've stuck with it. And it's lasting. And it's not just temporary. And it's not just a passing thought. And it's not just a, a little word. Or I just, you just will go and pray with someone one time. We need to learn how to give people things that's lasting. We need some stick to itness when it comes to our giving. Everything God gives, everything that God does is lasting. It's eternal. It says in Jeremiah 31 and 3 that the Lord has appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Unfailing kindness is what I keep drawing you with. Psalm 30 and 5. It says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. And what God does is eternal. And it's not just life. It's everything that he does. It's the love that he offers. It's the kindness and the grace and the mercy that he shows. It's the favor that he gives. It says in Psalm 121, I love this. I, I read it. Was it I, let me just read it to you again. It's very short. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heaven and the earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun and the moon will not harm you by day, not the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over you. You're coming and you're going both now and forever. God does forever kind of stuff, doesn't he? When God does something, it's lasting, isn't it? Austin's looking at me. I told Austin, I said, I said, I, can I write on your shirt? He said, he looked at it. I know it's like American Eagle or Abercrombie or Arrow. Oh, it's Arrow Pastel. That's cheaper. Yeah. This is what we need to do to people. You know what this is? Permanent marker. I know Christina's looking at me tough now too. This is what we need to give people. Right? We need to give them something that doesn't wash out, that doesn't fade away, that doesn't go away. Right? I should give him a tattoo. I'm not giving him a tattoo. I'm not, no, no. I know his mom and daddy. I don't know, man. Where should, where should, huh? 
Where's your preference? Right here. Right here. Right here. Your heart's right here, right? Right somewhere right there. Does he have Alberto told me you didn't have a heart, so I didn't know. I'm kidding. Jeez, you guys. Look at that. I'm gonna try to make it nice so it look look it blends in with the style. See that? Love. That's not gonna wash out. You could wash it out. You could try. You could try. But that's that it's a perm it doesn't come out. And he's like like, wait a minute, I didn't know you were gonna do this. Yeah, you did. This is what we need to give people. Something that lasts. Something that no matter what, I mean it's not he could cut it out, but it wouldn't look right anymore. Amen. Here you can have this. I want you to go right go right in your dad's shirt, okay? No, I'm kidding. don't do that. Don't do that. That's Hank's brand new shirt today. Don't Right on Hank's shirt. You understand the difference? You understand? We need to give people something that's lasting. It says in 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 5, it says that there was this group of people, they were called the Macedonians. And they were like the, one of the greatest examples of givers in the Bible. I mean, you've got like Jesus first, and then they're like, they're like a number two, number three. They're right there. And this is how Paul explains them. He says, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches, this grace of giving, in the midst of a very severe trial. Like, like talk about they were going through, as a group of people, the worst possible scenario, situation that anyone could ever go through. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy, it, it's like because something horrible happened, that instead of anger brewing up, that joy began to overflow. And their extreme poverty, a combination of everything they didn't have, and a joy that was unspeakable and full of glory that we don't even know where this came from. All of this, all of this, this severe trial, all of that welled up in them rich generosity. Are you kidding me? We don't even have a severe trial going on. We, we really don't even know what a severe trial is. We don't, many of us don't know what poverty is. My kids tell me I'm starving all the time, and I rebuke them. I say, you have no idea what starving is. I don't even know what starving is. These people were going through it. Probably like none of us have ever gone through it. And what happened? They got overfilled with joy. And something welled up on the inside of them to give. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able. But, but they went beyond their ability. And they gave over and beyond. It's like they were able to give more than what they had. I mean, how is that even possible? Entirely on their own. It's, it's like nobody, prom nobody came and preached. No one offered this sermon. Nobody came around and said, you know what you guys ought to do? You know, you're really going through it, you know. You, you, this is a really bad situation, you know? you know. You know what you need to do. You need to start sowing generously. No, no one came and told them anything. This was on their own. This was their own idea. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service of the Lord. It's like they were begging to give more. They had to stop it. It, it was like Moses building the tabernacle. They just, Hank talked about that a few weeks ago. They just brought so much that, that finally, it, guys, we don't even know what to do with it anymore. They exceeded our expectations, and they gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God, they also gave to us. You say, Pastor, why do you read that story? Because they made a mark. They did. That story has been talked about and read about for over 2,000 years. That story is not going away. They made their mark. They did something permanent with their giving that can never be taken away. It will always exist. Always in the Word of God. Always. God is saying that He loves you so much that he gave. And he said, my gift is for anyone. And, and what I give will last forever. We understand that. We receive that. We say, we quote the scripture, and we get it. But God is asking us, do you really get it? Do you really get it? Because unless you're doing what I've done for you, then I don't think you get it. Because we need to start giving. And we need to start giving to anyone and to everyone and give them things that last. Like writing love on their heart with a permanent marker that can never, ever go away. That's the message this morning. That 
is the greatest gift. What do you do with the greatest gift? You do the one thing that many of you don't want to do. 